All right, welcome today to our masterclass for the Congregational Church of Tryon. And today we're doing a collector's edition class. So for people who have amassed collections over their lifetime or just kind of have a fascination with collecting certain items, um, we have a couple here today from our church who have collections in their homes that they wanted to share. Um, so we have Donna Wise and uh, Keith Collins, and they're both going to be sharing with us today. So we thought we'd start out a little bit um, with each of them get to talk about uh, something that they start, why they have started collecting, what spoke to them about their, their item. Um, so Donna, if you want to go first, do you want to just give us a little bit of background about what your collection is? Yes, my collection has to do with birds. And it's not live birds. It's birds that are depicted in all kinds of different ways, in folk art and carvings and things that cost 10 cents and things that cost a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's been fun. And I didn't even go into it with an intention of collecting. Um, our last name is Wise. And so folks started um, giving us like owls and, you know, any kind of an owl card or an owl this or an owl that. And so that's what I'm showing today is my owls, my eagles, some funky folk, um, and hope I don't bore you with it. I'm sure not. Uh, how about you, Keith? What, uh, what will you be, what are you collecting currently and talking well, about I had, today? I had several things I was going to talk about, but I'll limit it to uh, uh, golf clubs, books, and lanterns. All right. It, can you tell us why you started collecting each of those items? Well, in 1944, I had an uncle who was flying B-17s over Germany out of England, and he was a big golfer. So he, he sent me four British golf clubs by name, Mashie, Niblick, Putter, and... Uh, an eight iron, and uh, I started playing golf in 1944 at age eight and continued to play for 50 years. So I've kept those clubs and collected about 100 other vintage golf clubs. Uh, I started collecting books about 1974 after we moved back to Greenville, and I collected first editions signed by the authors only. Had about 100 of those. And uh, it was a very pricey collection, but it burned in our fire in 19, uh, in 2000. Uh, the lanterns were something that I just picked up from free flea markets over a period of time and began to get interested in them and look at the, looking up the company that made them and uh, when they were made and what for. And I still have samples of those and I'll show some of those but those are the three things. Nice. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. Donna, did you want to start showing a couple of your items? Um, or do you want to start out in the yard to show a picture or two just to give a... Just yes. To, okay. So Donna shared with me some pictures that she took, and um, I created a little bit of a slideshow so we can show that. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, so we'll start to see that pop up, and you can just kind of talk about your uh, the ones that we see. Let me know if there's a direction you want me to go or a picture you want me to show. Um, oh, Keith, look, Masterclass Collector's Edition. Wow. We're very fancy. We're, you're we're you're going on to <laughs> <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's oh, boy, sort of the beginning here. <laughs> Y'all see? Just, just keep going. Just let them. All right. So this is just a collection of funky, interesting, not interesting birds that are out in the yard and in the house. I like that guy. He looks like he's made of like kind he's, of around he's, like he's concrete. And oh, he's, okay. he's and there is the real uh, owl that's going to get you down at the driveway. He's made out of a propane tank. Mm -hmm. Books. Is right. 
Let me know if you want me to stop on any. Yeah, just, just, I would just scroll through them. That's just a little concrete guy that sits, and this is a bench, birds on the back of the bench that's out in the yard. And that's a bird house. I started getting into bird houses too. And that's birds, and can you hold on that one, Lindsay? Which one? The, um... Oh, the one right now. Um, and see, it's a German antique bird, watercolor, and it actually has feathers. If, if you look at the, you may not have the next slide. That's uh, birds in a little bird bath. Is, is the next slide of uh, feathers. Yes. Sorry, I was, there we are. See them now? Nope, there. So see, those are literally feathers on that bird. Um, somebody did a, a watercolor and then applied the feathers to the watercolor. So you can see I have a thing for birds in all kinds of mediums. And, um, and I've never even been a bird watcher. I feel kind of guilty for having so many birds uh, without just knowing all about them and who they are. But anyway, so that one I thought was was pretty unique and it's antique uh, German. Thanks. Do you want me to go farther through or? I just yeah. keep going, yeah. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about how you display them around your home? I guess these, these next ones will be your home shots. Right, okay, so you see the big them. owl on the left there? Um, he's uh, a tin owl. He was made in Linville and he presides over my kitchen. And then the one on the right um, is a little bird uh, metal holder upper. See the up on top of, at the top of the brick. And then down below is actually um, this guy that Linda Iserlo gave me. And, um, and it's hand carved. It's my latest owl and um, it's on the sun porch. You can go to the next one. And here is uh, the inside. I, I'm not sure what to call this building, but it was on our property and it was a piece of junk. And so I had it redone and some new windows put in and I think it's called a she shed, but I don't know. Anyway, that guy is about two and a half feet tall and he is metal and he sits on a rusty metal base and you can see it sitting in the sunroom, I mean, excuse me, in the uh, she shed and you're supposed to relax and, uh, and there's another one of those birds. Okay, here is, um, and, and, Lindsay, after this one, let's let Keith come on, but to show you this, a local man um, made this um, display of birds. See, he's carved them out of some knots and so forth of, of wood, and it hangs on the wall in, in a hallway. And, um, and they, sell, they sell this at the Nest and I, at downtown Tryon, and I just fell in love with it. Now, the, one on, the picture on the right, shows another one of my hand carved birds uh, that I've had forever. He's about four feet wide and underneath that are two prints made by Mark Catesby. He's the first person that drew American birds um, he, in 1721. I'll tell you a little more about him later if we have time. So let Keith now share please. All right, thank you. Okay, Lindsay, I'll, right, start Keith, with, you... I'll start with the golf clubs and tell you a little bit about them. This happens okay, great. To be, as we have uh, moved down to a, a, a con Becky calls it the Econo Lodge. And I call it the cave. I have no reason to keep anything. But I have one golf club left of a collection of 100. And what I've done with these over a wow. period of years, I collected them from 1950 until probably the year 2000. I've gifted them to various friends with a letter of explanation of 
of where the club came from, what it was. This happens to be a letter about Ben Hogan's putter that he putted with from 1932 to 1937. And I came by that and I kept it for about 30 years. And I just have given it to a friend in Florida. And uh, that's what I'm doing with the golf clubs. And this is the last one. Uh, I may try to keep it if Becky will let me. We don't have much room here. The lanterns uh, <clears throat> were just a collection of things that I got interested in as we went from flea market to flea market. And, and Becky and I did that every Saturday for about 20 years. And I got real interested in them in this way. Uh, this particular one I'm holding up here is uh, just a, a big home and barn lantern and it would burn the longest and make the brightest flame. Uh, a very smaller version of that would be this. I'll hold up those two. You can see, see the two sizes. Uh, this would be the smaller size lantern that uh, Abraham Lincoln would have had this on the hearth as he studied the rumors go. And the reason for that is everybody would be sleeping in one room and he'd be disturbing everybody so he just had a small lantern that only lit up his books. Uh, one of the most unique ones, and I, I can't figure out how what I want to do with this finally, but this is a lantern that, uh, if you can see the light, I've had it wired so that it, it has a bulb in it. But it used to be on the back of a caboose going down a train track. And you can see the red light. Can you see the red light in the back? Yes. And that would show the caboose, and that would be a, a flame light in there. And uh, this, the company that made these went out of business in, in 1904. So this has to be 116 years old. It's probably maybe 100, 125 years old and uh, still in good shape. So those are, those are some of the things I've collected. My, uh, I collected tools for a long time. Uh, my grandfather was a, a carpenter that did work along the Southern Railway repairing bridges. He had a big heavy tool chest and I was given that at his death. And so I collected a lot of old tools and I've now given them to a son in Charlotte who is a contractor. So the most fun I'm having with most all of my uh, collections have been to uh, gift them to somebody else one by one with some explanations. And uh, as Becky would say, you don't ever let the, uh, true, what is it, truth get in the way of a good lie or whatever the <laughs> story goes, but, but you can embellish the, uh, the writings to show exactly what, uh, what you want to get across about how important it is. And it's been a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of this kind of thing. Uh, golf clubs in particular are hard to store, so they're hard to keep up with. I had a really nice gun collection of sharps that were buffalo guns, 4570 and 4590 caliber guns used to shoot buffalo in the 1780s to, to 1900. And, uh, those were hard to store and they were all in our home in Lake Lure and all burned in our fire there. So uh, mm. that did away with two collections. And that's about what I've got right here in front of me, just uh, uh, the various lanterns. And I've kept probably uh, 50 of those still that I'm just slowly giving away. And Becky wants to keep four or five outside here but uh, you, you finally just don't have room for a lot of a lot of things. That, like Donna's got great room over there for her bird collection. Uh, I just don't have room for all this stuff anymore, and it's it's really been enjoyable collecting it though. Where do you think was the best place for you to find items like that? The golf clubs and lanterns. Where well, do you? Uh, golf clubs. Basically, uh, you got to be careful about that because you got to get them some vintage golf club collection. Uh, hard to uh, 
hard to find them uh, and, and to get the story that goes with them too. A lot of times they're just old clubs laying around and you wouldn't know the difference unless you could get a story with it. I have a good friend in Greenville who collects golf clubs that I get a lot of pass-alongs that he doesn't want to fool with. Um, but I, I've enjoyed that. I enjoyed the book thing. I, I uh, was very interested in collecting a first edition. And if the author was still alive, I would try to run them down and get them to sign it. Uh, I did get Thomas Wolfe's mother to write a passage in a book that I had, uh, Look Homeward Angels. And I kept it for years and years, and it also burned in the fire. So it's, it was uh, things things like that were, were very interesting and, t you know, time-consuming things you could enjoy doing. Yeah. Now, with the books, did you collect just a specific genre of books or just any kind of first edition you could come across? I generally look through places where book bookstores and look for something that, that I knew something about, mostly uh, classical history, uh, uh, anything historical, uh, crusades particularly. I tracked down probably 50 books about the eight different crusades, and uh, I still have a good many of those. They're very, very interesting. Um, but uh, I would say, probably uh, modern Western European history from from 1500 forward would be a, a time frame that I would be looking for a lot of a lot of books. Yeah. Do you see yourself picking up a new collection, a new a new thing that you're going to collect? The only thing I collect over here would be stamps. <laughs> the only thing I got room to, room to collect and I probably couldn't put about 10 or 12 of those in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Uh, Donna, did you want to come back and, and we can show some more of your, your bits and pieces that you have? Do you want to show some that you have in front of you now or, or have me go back to your pictures? Um, I, if, if I may, when, um, what I'd like to do is I pull together um, several uh, eagles. And so I wanted to show you kind of from the ridiculous to the sublime. And so the, the first one, and I don't think I can get him in the screen. Um, let's see, can you see that? So yeah. Farmer Brown or somebody went out in the backyard and got a hunk of wood and started carving. And so he found out how the other people did it, and he put the wings on with a, like so, and, and that way you could carry him around and not break his wings. And then he went out and got some gold paint or something slathered over there. And so he's kind of the ridiculous, although for goodness sakes, not many of us could do this. And then, I think this is some kind of of wood, maybe even African, but that's just my guesswork. And this guy, if you look closely, you can see, can you, I'm not sure you can see. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the carving, how he's got him sitting on this big, heavy hunk of wood. And, um, and, and so it, it was the shape, it was the, the way the bird was was just, you know shown holding his body that just to me anything tactile anything creative anything different um, is appealing to me and um, then the next one is the sublime and this guy was done years and years ago. And um, he's done, you can see, very by a more craftsman. Um, and he has gold leaf. And he is, you can see the wood back. See, and, and you can even see that that's a board, that's a board, and that's a board. And so I have birds like this 
in my house ad nauseum, um, hanging over doorways and that sort of thing. Um, and it never, we've had, through the years, we've had a second home that was very, you know, cabiny and and informal. So I would go out and buy, here's a perfect little $5 piece of pottery that's an owl. And I would have that, you know, just sitting on a table. And then somebody said, well, you need this one. And he's made out of old oil pans. This is, wait a minute, there we go. So see this owl, he's on my, my mantle now. So what I'm getting at is that through the years, I had some more, quote, city-fied ones in the city house, and then these pieces of junk in, in the country house, um, which was, anyway. So um, look at here. Can you see this guy? He is uh, a piece of bark. Somebody stuck some ears on him. He's got pine cones for arms and st sticks for legs. And he hangs in the kitchen with that other big old green bird looking at him. And then I kind of, I'm a, I was an interior designer and for years. And so I, I like to have things that help people to know who you are when you're in a home. In other words, what books do you read? What do you collect? What do you love? Who is your family? You know, what, what's important to you? And so um, a friend recently gave me this little thing and that's nothing but a teeny little dish. And I went over for lunch and she had a muffin on the dish. And so I went home with, <laughs> with the owl dish. So it just goes on and on and I won't bore you with the rest of them, but, um, but it has gotten to be a little bit foolish, but we're just, um, we're going to pretend we don't know that. So, um, and, and do we have a minute that I can talk about Mark Catesby again? Oh, yes. Yeah. Did okay. you want me to go back to that picture? Uh, yes. And I have his, a book right here. Okay. So let's, let's go back. Okay. Um, the Tryon Garden Club is um, going to have a program about Mark Catesby. We were to do it in April and we weren't able to, but Mark Catesby, they call him the Curious Mr. Catesby, and there's a video and a book now at the Lanier Library that you can check out. And you can learn about Catesby who came from England to um, Williamsburg, and uh, his sister was there, and he was there with her to escort her over. And um, he was in Williamsburg, then even down into North Carolina, South Carolina, and then out to the Bahamas. And we have a collection uh, that's not fair. I say we, my husband thought they were just weird birds on pictures, but for me, they, they were, some of them are the original 1700s, early 1700s, um, engravings that were hand colored. And uh, we have a, a wall of those in our home. And, uh, and the ones that I showed in that other picture with the big bird on top, that those are just prints. And Williamsburg itself now is doing some of those prints. Um, reproducing is what I'm trying to say. So, so it's been a, a real, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not, I was going to show you some more of those pictures, but I won't do that. Okay. So all that to say is find something that you love. It doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of energy. It gives you like Keith said, a Saturday to go to the flea market. So many of mine came from junk stores and flea markets and that sort of thing. And, um, and so it, I just think it adds another dimension to our lives. Yeah. Now, did you find, you said a lot of yours, how much of your collection do you think was gifted to you versus that you found yourself and, and purchased? Um, probably a fourth was gifted, uh, may, maybe a third um, because like the, I love that owl that's made out of the propane tank. And my daughter just appeared with it one day and it's bigger, way bigger than I am. <laughs> so there it is, you know, plucked in the yard. And in Charlotte, it wouldn't have looked too cute in the front yard. And, you know, and my, my neighbors might not have liked it, but here it's just greeting you as you come up the driveway. And, and then lots, you know, all through the years, as I said, my most recent is from Linda Iserlow. And, I just love this sweet little owl that hangs out on the porch. 
Now, do you know how many birds you have? Have you counted? Do you have any idea how many you have in your possession? I have no idea. And the funny thing is, yesterday when I was going around looking at them to think about it, I found birds that I didn't even know were birds. Uh, I have a, did I send, I, I have a, a thing, a folk art woman hanging on the wall in the den. And um, she has wire for hair that sticks up out of her head like she's had a finger in a light socket. And, um, and I call that Donna and I say, she's wired. Well, I looked yesterday and Donna has a bird on her right shoulder. <laughs> and so all these years I've collected the Donna, um, but there I found her with a, with a bird yesterday. So it's amazing. And, but I did at Thanksgiving, we had a, about 10 little kids in the house and I told them that I'd give uh, a prize to the person that found the most birds and they ran around and they were counting birds everywhere <laughs> squealing so <laughs> they brought us a lot of joy. <laughs> Cute. Um, do you want me to go ahead and show the the last few pictures that we have of stuff inside your house? Okay and just yeah. and I won't comment. I, just to say thanks for letting us do this. It was fun, it's creative, and we're glad that Keith I'm, I'm so glad that Keith was willing to, to do his part, and we, are, we hope that others will want to do their collections, too, in the future. Yeah. I think it's fun to be able to see, um, because it does take a lot of work to put, put all that stuff together, and a lot of patience sometimes on the, on the part of the spouse, um, you know, <laughs> as, you're, as you're spending all your time collecting all this stuff. Um, Keith, did you have any advice for people who have collections? Do you have a, a word of advice that you would give somebody about, um, you know, how to go about it or, or yeah, the best do, way do, to, to manage it? Do something with each collection. And I'll give you an example. Uh, with all the old tools, I built about 80 tables and uh, of one style and a hundred of another style and one one of those as an example is in the church vestibule as you come in where the where the uh, uh, bulletins lay on Sunday morning coming in from the side door and then one other part that I built one afternoon in about two hours with a request for a rolling uh, speaker's cabinet for the back room back there and uh, that was put together in about two hours so it probably will fall apart someday but uh, uh, just do be be interested in what you're doing and then learn to do something with it that's good yeah. now did you play with your golf clubs I you sure did. did you play with them played yeah in college played played in both in college and in amateur golf afterwards all the way through uh, age 71, I shot my age in, in uh, Ireland. And very shortly after then, I had my first back trouble and I hadn't played any golf since then, but uh, it's enjoyable to do something with. I didn't do much with the guns. All the guns I ever collected, I never shot one of them. It was just something that was an interesting collection. Uh, but most everything else I've, I've uh, used as I collect them. Yeah, that's good advice. Collect something that you're actually going to use instead of just have it use and enjoy, right? Instead of just yeah, yeah. sitting in a in a shed somewhere or uh, in a spare bedroom. Yeah. And uh, Lindsay, do you know the bird over Keith's left shoulder? Yeah. Okay, I may have to come and steal that overnight. But. <laughs> yeah. So you you can add to my collection, Keith, and I'll bring a right. gun. Oh my goodness, no! <laughs> we'll get another pound of stuff out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I think we've bored them enough. Yeah. Um. Thanks for letting us share. Well, thank, thank you so much for sharing and, and telling, you know, letting us know about what you've spent your life collecting and um, 
and something, you know, it's a passionate thing for people, their collections. Uh, so it's always interesting when you are able to hear people talk about the things that they collect, I think, because you really can a lot of times kind of hear the passion in their voice and, and it makes it more interesting. So um, thank the power, you. For, for the power sure. goes out to church. We've got enough lanterns to light it up. <laughs> I know, I know we should be getting those lanterns to put out at Christmas instead of those little paper bags that I'm always out there lighting. We could light all your, we could line all your lanterns that, up. Wouldn't be that many, thanks. Okay, enjoy <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the recording.